you want to study like a pro, you're in the right place. I'm going to give you a number of examples that'll double, triple, quadruple your memory for material with very little effort on your part. So we're going to talk about all of these effects that you see here. And in this first video, we are going to talk about the importance of organizing information, the generation effect, the enactment effect, and the self-reference effect. So if you don't understand information, then sometimes the best thing to do is to cut it up into little pieces and organize it. Figure out what the hierarchy of concepts is. You see me do this a lot in my slides. All of memory, explicit and implicit memory, different types of explicit memory, different types of implicit memory, the characteristics that go with each of them. Structure the material in a way that shows the complexity of the relationships um, between um, bits of information in that material. So as you, as you take information and break it down and organize it into hierarchies, to do that, you have to process the information semantically. That is, you need to think about the meaning of the information. And that, in and of itself, is enough to significantly improve your memory for that information. It turns out that when you generate information, you are much more likely to remember it. You're actively engaged in something. You're producing information. You remember what you produced, but you don't remember what you passively, passively observed other people producing. So what does that mean? It means, hey, maybe Maggie knows what she's talking about when she says on the top of every study guide, be sure to generate at least two examples of every concept. Why do I say that? Not to entertain myself, but because this graph should humble you. This is a graph of how well people could remember various ideas as a function of how many examples they generated for that idea. And what I want you to see is with each example generated, memory goes up by a lot. Can you see there that if people remembered the main idea and generated th whoops, three examples of that idea, their memory increased four times, 400% improval in memory if you generate three examples over just remembering the main idea. So the students who just memorize the concepts in my class, they're not going to do nearly as well as the students who memorize the concept after they understand the concept and generate two or three examples of that concept. They're taking advantage of the generation effect and their memory for the concept skyrockets four times. These effects are ginormous. Okay, the enactment effect. It turns out if you act something out, you're much more likely to remember it. How do we know this? Well, we know this from a study where instead of memorizing lists of words or nonsense syllables, they had subjects memorize lists of actions. So shuffle the cards, brush your teeth, comb your hair, that sort of thing. Half of the students or the participants in this study read the list of actions and then tried to recall them later. The other half saw each action listed and performed it. So they combed their hair. They brushed their teeth. What was the other one? They shuffled cards. The people who enacted the actions had a much stronger, um, much higher, much better memory for those concepts. It's a really big effect. It's such a big effect that this works with people who have dementia. Yeah. If you know somebody in your family who has dementia and they can't remember what they need to do, have them do it. Have them act it out and they will be much more likely to remember it. Now, why do I beg you to do the demonstrations each time I give one? Because I know from the enactment effect that if you participate in the demonstrations, you really do them your memory will skyrocket. And so again, 
students in my class, those who sit back and passively watch uh, demonstrations happen and just memorize terms and concepts, you're not going to get an A in my class. It's the students who generate their own examples, make sure they understand the concepts and the terms, and who act them out. They're the ones who are getting A's in my classes. And you know what? They're spending less time studying than the students who aren't doing these things. They're getting better scores with less time invested. That's studying like a pro. Here's another one, the last one from this segment, the self-reference effect. Now, I already told you about levels of processing, right? Your ability to remember a list of words depends on how deeply you think about each of those words. Do you just look at the structure of the word? Does it have a capital letter? Are you looking at the sound of the words, thinking about what it rhymes with? Or are you thinking about the meaning of the words? Does it uh, fit in a particular sentence? And each of those things improves memory. But what's the biggest bang for your buck? Taking a concept and finding an example of it in your own life, relating the material to you. Look at that green bar. <laughs> That's memory. That's the self-reference effect. Look how much bigger it is than the other three types of, of word processing. If you take material and you relate it to yourself, to you make it real in your life, your likelihood that you're going to remember that material goes way, way, way up. Come back and I'll show you another set of tips on how to study like a pro.